talking in the back of the church. Good morning, everyone. We have a busy day today, so I'm going to fill you in on that. But before we get started, a note that our altar flowers this morning were offered by Jacqueline Bodensteiner with wishes and prayers for peace and for an end to all war. So thank you, Jacqueline. A reminder that following worship today, the youth are invited to head to the chapel. They're going to practice some music for the new program year, while all of their adults are invited down to the fellowship hall. We are going to have a brief conversation about our child safety policy. We need adults to sign off on the child safety policy, but also some of the expectations of our program year that's going to kick off in a couple weeks. And during that time, I'm going to meet with any confirmation or high school students in this space, and we're going to go over accolade training and usher training in here. So if you're a confirmation age or high school, meet me in here after worship. A note that the Bell Choir and the choir officially begin on Wednesday, September 6th. Anyone, though, that is available this week in choir to come early for an early practice, Wednesday, uh, August 28th, you're invited to come this week at 6 p.m. if you can. A note that on Thursday, our office will not be open until 9.30 a.m., so just kind of take note of that. And then I want to invite up Brian Gilliam, who is our treasurer, to give us an update from council from the email you received this week. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, just wanted to go briefly over Pastor's email that she sent this week. So it's been a long process over the summer, and I don't see Elizabeth, but if you see Elizabeth in the office, tell her thank you very much. She has been through the ringer this summer on this issue. So uh, the council learned at the beginning of the summer that we are no longer going to have insurance. Our current insurance company is dropping us. So uh, throughout that process, we've been declined by 15 companies, and 10 wouldn't even entertain a quote. And it mostly stems with the age of the building. Um, this doesn't make it any better, but we're not unique in this situation. There are churches across the country who are dealing with this. You may know some friends and family who can't find home insurance in Iowa. A lot of it is due to the natural disasters, the flooding, um, tornadoes, all the stuff that's happening in the state. The insurance companies are just not uh, giving quotes or, or insuring anybody. So we did find one company um, that will agree to, be, to insure us, but uh, it's incredibly expensive or it's more expensive than what we're paying. So due to that, it is over 3% of our operating budget. We do need to have a special meeting to vote to approve that. The council or the church needs to, the congregation needs to vote to approve that. That's going to happen on September 8th following the 11 a.m. worship. We are going to have a vote to approve um, the, the expending of these funds from the endowment fund to make sure that the church is insured. Uh, we really don't have any options. I mean, this is the one company that said yes, so we will keep working. This is not the end of the end of the issue. I think we'll continue to look for companies and continue to look for a better deal, but at this moment in time, this is kind of where we're at. Uh, I would like, you know, talk to Elizabeth. This isn't anything that we did. The spending is not, we don't have a spending problem. It's just, it is what it is with the insurance. So um, just consider that. I just want to make sure you are aware. September 8th at 11 a.m., right after church in the sanctuary, we'll have a vote. And, if you have any questions, feel free to email the council or pastor. And if you do see Elizabeth, please tell her thank you because she has done awesome work. Ryan. So as you know, this will be a huge change in our budget for this coming year, but hopefully we'll be able to find some options throughout the year. Uh, that day also happens to be our 10-year anniversary celebration, so we are encouraging you to turn in questions early so that we can attend to those before the meeting so that we can still celebrate together that day. We gather for worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able, and to turn to your bulletins for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance. Let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? 
Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and you are nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and you are loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 510, Word of God, Come Down on Earth. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
I invite you to pray with me our prayer of the day as printed in our bulletins. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, renouncing what is false and evil. We may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We invite the congregation to be seated, and any kids that want to come up for the children's message, we are doing a backpack blessing this morning, so if you have your backpacks, bring them on up. Take my smile. Scoot down. Hi, Lovinia. Are you going to sit? Good morning. You're okay. Yeah, they're quiet. Did some of you start school already? Yeah. Was it exciting first day so far? Yeah. Do some of you start school this week? Yes. Tomorrow? Are you ready? I'm starting tomorrow. You're starting tomorrow. Are you ready? Yeah. As ready as you can be, right? We, every year here, are so, sit please, so proud of you, so proud, Ada, I can't sit like that, please, uh, so proud of everything that you are going to do this year. Is school always fun? Yeah? No? Mixed feelings on that, most of the time, maybe? Especially our high schoolers, they love school, love, love, love it, Yeah. Some days are going to be good days this year, and some days might be hard days. And what I want to remind you is that no matter if you have the best day or if you have maybe one of your worst days, that God is going to be there with you and that God loves you no matter what. And so today we're going to say a prayer for your school year, for all the things that you're going to be up to, and we're going to bless these backpacks that you take to and from with you. But before we do that, I want you to grab a little tag for your backpack. So let's hand these out. And this tag says, everywhere I go, I go with you. It's from Psalm 139, seven. And we're gonna invite you to put these on your bags this year or whatever you take to school with you if you want to remind you that God is with you no matter where you go. So after you get a tag, if you brought a backpack, grab your backpack and put it on. Does everybody have a tag? That's okay. You can add one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. So if you need help putting your tag on now, you can do it. Or we can do it after this when you're back in your pews. It's up to you. I will help you. There you go. So, let's see. This looks like a good spot. I could hang it right from here, okay? Perfect. Here we go. Set it right on here, okay? And you guys can move these around if you want to. There you go. Anybody else need help? Got them? All right, so if you have your book bags, you can either put them on your back or you can squeeze them around your chest and give them a big old hug. And we're gonna say a blessing together. And sometimes in a church, we say a blessing with our hand kind of raised like this. So I want you to put your hand on one of your neighbors on their backpack or their shoulder. I'm gonna get to you. Has everybody got a hand on a shoulder? Come on over or on a backpack. <laughs> All right, well, let, us, let us bless these bags. Friends, in the Bible, we read how parents brought their children to see Jesus. But Jesus' friends tried to shoo them away. They said that kids were not important enough to spend time with Jesus. 
But Jesus saw this happen, and he told his friends to knock it off. Let the children come to me. Don't send them away, because God's love is for them just as it is for every single person in this world. And you know what Jesus did after that? He opened his arms, and he hugged every single one of those kids. So as you hold or you wear your backpacks or you think of your backpacks this morning, let us pray. Dear God, as we get ready to start another year in school, we ask your blessing on these backpacks and especially on these children who will wear them. Bless them with an eagerness to learn, respect for teachers and students, a love for nature, happiness when learning is easy, and a stick to itness when it is hard, and a faith in Jesus as their best teacher and closest friend. God, we ask that you protect them as they travel to and from school, as they learn, and as they discover the different gifts that you have given each of them. And finally, bless them to remember that you love them, now and always, no matter where they are, no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your seats and have the best year. Oh, I got shoes. Covenant, the word, means agreement or alliance. It describes relationships and is the primary word used to characterize the relationship between God and Israel. By delivering Israel, God has already begun the relationship. Joshua calls upon the people to respond to that. A read it from Joshua chapter 24. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now, therefore, revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond that river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Reading responsively from Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against all those who do evil, to erase the remembrance from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. God will keep safe in the homes, and not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O oh Lord, redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will be punished. Like a general giving a rousing speech to the troops before the hot bottle, this letter from Ephesians, from the Apostle Paul, chooses by calling on Christians to be equipped for spiritual warfare against evil. The full armor of God includes truth, righteousness, peace, faith, the gift of salvation, and the Word of God inspired by the Spirit. From Ephesians 6. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and have done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But this, the one who eats this bread, will live forever. And he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who could accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back, and they no longer went with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated. Friends, grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So we are continuing in John's Gospel this week. And a reminder that John's Gospel was written in a time of significant tension and division. The early Christian community first hearing the Gospel was facing significant political and religious persecution from the Roman Empire and Jewish authorities. They're living in a time after the beloved temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, which impacted Jewish identity and caused a greater rift between the followers of Jesus who began to see themselves as distinct from Judaism and those traditional Jewish communities. And so throughout John's Gospel, we can hear the struggles and the concerns of a community that is really striving to define its identity and its beliefs in the face of external and internal challenges. And one of the hopes of this Gospel was that it would help the readers and the hearers 
believe in Jesus. And that by believing in him, they would experience and live into the new life that comes with a life that is lived in Christ. And today we are continuing in the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. And so if you're not tired about hearing about like bread of life or water of life that we've been hearing about for five or six weeks now, you're doing better than I am. We've been sort of going through this bread of life discourse. And I sort of picture Jesus' followers here like toddlers. They're a little too young to grasp what Jesus is saying because their brains just physically can't accept it. But Jesus continues to repeat the same thing over and over again, hoping they get it. I'm sure none of your parents ever did anything like that, right? But Jesus does this because it's important. He needs them to give what he's saying. And so this entire portion of chapter 6 is called the Bread of Life Discourse. And I would say it is one of the most profound and controversial teachings of Jesus. We started this Bread of Life Discourse several weeks ago with the story of Jesus feeding more than 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. It is that miracle that echoed the manna from the wilderness during the Exodus, which was a foundational story for the Jewish people. It symbolizes God's care and God's sustenance for God's people. And so the crowd that witnesses that miracle and participates it, in it are very eager to follow Jesus because they're hoping for more signs, for more wonder, and they're hoping that it's going to lead to political deliverance from Roman oppression. But as we noted, right after Jesus feeds the 5,000, he shifts the focus from physical bread to spiritual bread. And a couple stories that we heard right before this one, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And that declaration then begins a series of increasingly challenging statements as Jesus continues to then identify himself as the true bread from heaven, a bread that gives eternal life. Jesus even says today that unlike the manna their ancestors ate, which sustained them temporarily, he offers something greater. He offers salvation through his own flesh and his own blood. Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will believe and will live because of me. That's the heart of our passage this morning. So for these Jewish followers, right, these early Jewish followers, as well as those who maybe heard this gospel for the first time, this statement wasn't just confusing to them, it was very scandalous. The idea of eating flesh or drinking blood wasn't just repulsive, it was absolutely forbidden by Jewish law. In the Torah, the first five books of our Bible, it strictly prohibits the consumption of blood, as it was considered to be the life force of all living creatures. So Jesus' words here offer this sharp contradiction to the law that all of his followers held to be so very sacred. So we can imagine then, right, why they begin to question him and why they decide to quit following him. They simply can't grasp the symbolism of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. But the Gospel of John loves symbolism. And Jesus is trying to teach them that just like actual bread sustains their bodies, as the true bread from heaven, he can sustain their lives, which is to say, offer them real salvation. But the crowds and the other disciples following Jesus really struggle to grasp the spiritual significance of his words. They expected a Messiah who would come to save them. Those expectations were rooted in earthly concerns like political liberation, those miraculous signs, physical sustenance having their daily needs met. These followers were so eager to receive those benefits of Jesus' power 
but they were absolutely not prepared to hear the demands of his teachings. They were looking for a powerful leader who could provide for their physical and material needs. They were not looking for someone who would call them to a radical spiritual transformation. So they question him, and they turn away from him. But what we'll hear in John's Gospel as we continue is that Jesus will still invite and welcome them anyway. Because as the bread of life, Jesus reveals that God's love is not distant, and it is not abstract. It is tangible, nourishing, and sustaining. It is a testament to the lengths that God would go in order to be in relationship with them and with us, literally to the point of God putting on human flesh and experiencing human suffering and a human death. So that invitation and welcome that Jesus extends in our gospel today isn't temporary. It abides, which is to say that it remains and it dwells and it continues to be fully present no matter where Jesus' followers or disciples or those first hearers of this gospel or you or I find ourselves. And although there are times where that is very difficult to believe, it was difficult for them to believe, there are moments of hardship in our lives where it is difficult for us to believe. That doesn't change the reality of it. Because there is nothing in this world that could separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Jesus simply hopes that his followers will know that and be vulnerable enough to live into it. What a scandalous thing to do, to choose to love and to be loved. Amen. Our hymn of the day this morning is 733. He comes to us as one unknown, and I invite you to rise.
invite you to turn to your bulletins. And together with the church across the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, for the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and a bold witness. Merciful God. Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God. God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see it fit. Merciful God. God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. And care for those who are on our hearts, especially today we pray for Gerald, Ed, James, Latchor, Vivian, Ingrid, Maggie, Russell, Malcolm, Vicki, Oscar, Lewis, Craig, Tessa, Jerry, Linda, Marilyn, Tim, Robert, Cheryl, Bert, Randy, Dixie, Liam, Cielo, and Trudy. Merciful God. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God. God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journeys end. Merciful God. We lift these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. For those who are worshiping with us online, God's peace be with you. It's good to be with you this morning.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self. You have called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of this world. Amen. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into this world, to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it for his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together around this table by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Come. I invite you to be seated. The last Sunday of the month, we do communion around our rail. Our ushers will guide you forward by pew. In our trays, in the outer circles, the red liquid is wine. The center circles, the clear liquid is grape juice. We also have a gluten-free wafer available. When you come up to the table, those who come up to this side, just a reminder that we go down the ramp to ensure that we don't have a little bit of a traffic jam. This is God's table. You are welcome. Come to the table believing.
friends, may the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to rise to receive the blessing. A reminder that following worship, kids are invited to go to the chapel. Uh, adults that have kids in programming or that want to get to know programming, you're invited to the fellowship hall. Kids from two to t- two years old to 12th grades can be in programming here. And then high school and confirmation students stay in this room. Friends, may the blessing of God, who provides for us, who feeds us, and who journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is 820, O Savior, Precious Savior. the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.